It's not as if, like, the ones all out there are all the anarchy, but a lot of them don't even know for anarchy, so the whole thing's just fucked up. But some of them aren't oh. anarchy. Listen, some of them are A10s, but because of their affiliation with the anarchy, their guides are telling them. Their ayahuasca trip that opened them straight onto the astral plane comes back with the Enki Enlil creation story are telling them. So it's like they've got this awakening happening, but instead of allowing that awakening to give them their full truth, right, it's like it's being programmed. So the awakening's been given a nice box. The awakening's been given nice words. You're in a simulation. Well, tell me about that simulation. How does it work? How did we get here? At least I fucking go to that extent. The, the ayahuasca and the mushrooms, to me that strikes me as something um, resonant of Moo, or is it something they put in here to lead us up the wrong path? Look, any, any substance that you take into your physical vehicle is going to affect it, right? You take mm. those particular substances to have a different experience of consciousness. It opens you to different worlds inside the reality. It opens you to different realities inside the construct. Right? Mm -hmm. For me and my experience, and when I say that, no, I haven't taken IA for this reason, but I've taken DMT. <laughs> Is that illegal? Did I just, did I just <laughs> inoculate myself? No. Um, what I'm saying is the IA as a frequency will take you straight to the astral plane. Now, I have no interest in that. Right? The DMT takes you through the astral. That's why it's such a hit. Right? So where you get your information from is literally outside of the construct. Mm -hmm. right? I think that's why a lot of people meet aliens or they meet God or whatever. It's like it's, out, it's outside of this realm. People will take mushrooms because in my experience what it does is it connects them more to that elemental layer, that elemental realm that makes up this reality. Right? For me, my understanding of Aya is it's only about 150, 170 years old. It was introduced. Now, what does that tell you? What about mushrooms, do you think? Well, mushrooms, a, mushrooms, mushrooms are a different thing. I think that mushrooms are part of an organic structure. Uh, I think yeah. that where they take you is definitely an organic world or an organic experience. I feel that some of... The plant medicines are not helpful. Mm. And some of them really are. And I think you'll be guided to the ones. And that's the idea is that it's a, it's a sacred moment. You're being guided to work with the energies of that particular. Like everything's got consciousness. Yeah. You know, everything. Be it the little flower, be it a bunch of kale, be it even like, you know, the mobile phone's fucking got consciousness. We've been hearing that. Remember that Siri thing? Mm -hmm. One day when oh. I was talking with Teresa and we were here and we were doing the thing. Oh, Sarah, you know I was talking about devices. Um, I mean, I didn't even go into this because there's so much information. We run on protons and electrons, okay? And devices, um, they're, we're carbon, yeah? And device, our electronic devices are made from silicon, and silicon is higher up the um, periodic table than carbon, and therefore it needs more energy to run. So when you even hold a mobile phone, basically it's literally scientifically proven that it's stealing our um, protons and electrons to make it run because silicon needs more energy, and so it steals it from us. So basically. All our devices are draining our energy. I'm, just, I'm listening and I'm freaking out because I remember there was this real zeitgeist. I've used that word a few times today. There was this real fucking movement about we're moving from a carbon-based being to a silicon-based being. Do you remember that? Yeah. Wouldn't that reflect what? Yeah, from the organic to the trans. About. Exactly. Transhumanism, yeah. not the yin yang. Isn't that? See, that's an example of how the Anunnaki try and. Uh, control <laughs> the narrative mm -hmm. right so if we think that we're going to turn into that because the consciousness rules the template yeah it's all this crystalline being shit as well oh fuck i've heard some crazy shit over the weekend honestly crystal children 13th strand g and h autistic children are special you know like 
I'm not knocking or t what I'm trying to say is like they give you damage and then they tell you how special you are because of the damage. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, it's so much part of the programming, what they tell you, what you listen to, what you connect to, or what's available to connect to. And then how you create yourself. the reality accordingly. Yeah. You know? And the more powerful the creator that you are, the more efficient that could be. Yeah, mind you, I think many of the skip up hope of Nibiru coming, even though they tried to bring that into reality. Fucking Nibiru. Oh, what? Suck me senseless. Oh, no. Going back in the 90s. Nibiru. Oh, fucking, why don't we just. I mean, it sounds like something Scientology should make a movie about. I mean, <laughs> fucking seriously. All right, what else have you got? I mean, look. Those ones that are waiting. We used to know a guy that was so paranoid about this Nibiru. I mean,. Yeah, he used no, to. like seriously crazy shit, like blocking windows and doors. They can see me. They can hear. Moving to really, re I mean, really crazy shit. That's how I first heard of Nebiru. So you can imagine my association. <laughs> There's some of an English bloke who's moved to the top of a Spanish mountain, waiting for it. Mind you, that was about three years ago. I don't know whether it's still there. Well, you know, there's no real time yeah. in the matrix when you take. The <laughs> I mean, what is time? Is that like 2012? 2018. You might there. It might still be there because I think, you know, the minute I move, that's when the fuck will come. I better stay here. I don't know. <laughs> well, if we're creating our reality, you can move mountains, baby. I mean, look, I've, I live in a rainforest, basically, and sometimes I've sat in the rainforest and I can feel the construct, like, wanting me to energise it, to bring it to life. I can feel it. It's insane. And in times like that, it's a bit disheartening. It's like, where the fuck am I? And you can go into victim. I get it. But then you just turn it around. It's like, good. If I'm going to energise this construct using my energy, it's going to behave the way I want it to. And any of the fuckers who's been sucking on my energy, I engage Mart. Just you see, one around. thing, when you, you, you said um, to me recently that you think, like, we're going to have a closed dreaming here. Okay. Um... What struck me about that is that obviously if we do that, the Anunnaki will be left with the mess that they created kind of thing. How dreadful. <laughs> but when you say the Anunnaki would be left with the mess they've created, who'll be energising that construct? Maybe well, they won't maybe. exist. Yeah, because they have to have organic life to exactly. feed, to make them... There might be a few A10s that go over there to run that construct. I was going to say, you forget. They won't, they, won't have, again. they won't have the life force to sustain it and it will go into the atrophy, atrophy that it should have done and died out when Mu first fell into solid matter. Well, you see, that makes me think that all organic life has to get, um, create a closed dreaming in order for that to happen or at what least is, most of it. And what is all organic our life? Left. So what are we talking about now with organic life? So define What's organic that? life. Huh? Okay, so we've got um, <laughs> the A11s, yeah? And then we've got the um, organic A10s who were trapped here, and then you've got the organic A10s that were brought here. They'll be the, I guess, the organic A10s that were brought here and are willingly serving the mission will be the last ones left. <laughs> but then they have such little life force because they've been living off all of us. How long will their construct last? So in, yeah. in answering your thing, I think or I feel that all these little planetoids that have been made up the way that I explained, they're literally mm -hmm. going to become the movers. It's like suddenly she has the... And there's never been, that I know of in my memories, a complete galaxy that has the essence of whatever it is, so we'll use the example of Mu, as its sort of mothership or its pleroma, right? And all the other surrounding ones that's part of it has also the essence of that original. So many of the other ones have been constructs and things like that. This is a different kind of galaxy. This life force. So did Mu in the first place play on Amun's jealousy? covetness and instigate the whole fucking thing? Well, that's it. All 
we know is that she's going to come up smelling of roses and she always was going to, no matter how it happened, who did it, how it started, we know how it's going to finish. And that's what's well, hopefully. important. Isn't it? <laughs> hopefully. She's going to become a rock. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's new galaxies being created all the time. It's just how are they created? This particular galaxy or this particular set yeah. of realities will all revolve or will all stem from the essence of Mu. And that really, I mean, I, I just... I can feel it. It's so... <laughs> oh. I know, finally the bags have gone. <laughs> Bag. Johnny's like a barometer. You can see yeah. it in his face. You know how they say, I can't hide anything on my face? He's one of those. Yeah. Oh, I'm like one of those as well. I know that. <laughs> I don't know what I am. I think I'm like this half the time, half the time I'm like this. <laughs> I've got a terrible mm-hmm. resting bitch face. Anyway. I have one actually. <laughs> it's the ageing. Everything goes <laughs> So, well, that's the thing, right? It's like what I've been doing is going in, sitting with essence, feeling that Ramu Tet, feeling that soul star flair. And in that I just add the flavour of Mu. And I can just feel her... And I say her because for me it's a feminine presence or essence. And I just feel that energy. And it's like in that I can feel her soul star. And that's like this, it's a black golden void. Does that make sense? (laughs) But in that, it's like when I feel that and I pump in that, I'm telling you, man, I fucking anti-age. I can heal shit. Oh, he's doing it. I can heal shit. It's amazeballs. And to me, that's that real sun. That's that real energy that is we're in symbiosis with. You know, they do the fake thing to make us mm-hmm. em- like so copy what we do with Moo with this fake sun. So when you're in that state, when you're in with yourself in that connection with Moo, all of that AMF shit it's just it has no effect. I mean, I'm going no. like that, like, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> it repels it. it he's nearly 60, I'm in my 50s. <laughs> well, I always love that thing when you say antidote neutralise immunology. Oh. And, and that comes from the booster. Totally. Right. Yeah. So just, I'll, I'll recap in that. So what that means is when you're sitting in this mainlining moo thing, you're feeling her antidote neutralise and immunise you against whatever's not hers. That's all you have to feel. Whatever's not aligned with this and just feel the bliss. There's no fucking engagement of this, no direction. You just (laughs) let it run. And, I mean, I think that's what has been sustaining you. After we did that deuterium, I can't pronounce it, the D word, deuterium. (laughs) After we did that deuterium (laughs) exercise. I mean, that and I think, too, when you got the right diet, you know, Johnny did that kind of streamlining thing for you. You blossomed, man. Yeah, that session was good.